Hello Hobby Wing fans and welcome to this new video in which we're going to talk about the new G3 Esk that was recently released. Uh, it's a long awaited ESC which just came out. It's been under development for a few months. And uh, as always, Hobby Wings pushing the, the limits in terms of innovation and performance with this new ESC. I personally had a privilege to run it for a few months in my X4 touring cars and I've been really impressed with um, of course the feel of the ESC, the new functions and how you can use these functions to, to tune the, um, the feeling of the throttle and the brake. And I'm going to talk about these new functions, how to understand them and how to use them. But let's start with uh, the obvious differences from the G2 ESC. So, First of all, the footprint smaller. So the ESC is now um, smaller footprint, the height lower, and the fans a lot slimmer. The fan is still detachable. I know there were some questions about that. You can still remove the fan, um, especially for um, spec raising and for modified raising indoors where you don't really need the fan because the the speedo stays uh, sufficiently cool without the cooling fan. I still recommend keeping it on there, um, but you have the option to remove it if you like. So a lot of customers asked for the differences between the two versions of the ESC. So you have the gray version, which is called the G3X, which is mainly recommended for stock classes for the reason that the G3X doesn't have the reverse polarity protection built in anymore and this helps the performance in stock classes so be careful when you plug it in to not uh, break the ESC the black version however the normal version still has the reverse polarity protection however unless you run the optional reverse polarity capacitor the capacitor can still break from plugging in the battery uh, backwards uh, so keep that in mind, but it still has the protection built in. So for modified classes, I recommend the black version. For stock classes, the G3X. The other difference is the cables that come with ESC. The silver version has 12 AVG wires, so a bit thicker wires than the the black version which comes with the 13 AVG which is perfectly sufficient for modified but for stock a lot of drivers prefer the little bit bigger thicker wires which have less resistance and thus they help the performance in stock classes. Those are the differences between the two versions of the ESC. And Another thing, which is just a detail, which I found nice, is that the capacitor now has a black heat shrink, which uh, obviously helps with the aesthetics of the, um, the ESC installation in the car. Um, another important thing is the um, orientation of the wire. So this makes it a lot easier to wire the Speedo nicely in the car, with um, the terminals being on this side. Uh, you have the sensor wire coming out here from the back as well as the fan also being connected at the back which makes for a very clean look. The front you still have the switch obviously, the output for the um, program card which it's plugged in here. And you can also connect an external switch here if you'd like. For some um, racing categories that's preferable to have an external switch. Okay, so what about the functions of the ESC? We have some new functions now. It's called, um, first of all, uh, freewheeling, which is a new function which was developed by Hobbywing uh, through a lot of R&D and testing. And freewheeling, the best way to describe it without uh, complicating this too much is that it works uh, as a drag brake from a real electric vehicle. So. Imagine your Tesla going down the street, it has a, actually has a freewheeling function. So it's not to be confused with a drag brake, which a drag brake only works in neutral. So when you're not using the throttle, the drag brake is activated and you can set it to 
a certain percentage as you're probably familiar with but the freewheeling works in a way where uh, it works across the whole power band so you can set it to a certain amount that you have a natural slowdown from the from the ESC and uh, this actually as opposed to a drag brake which actually heats up the motor and ESC more the freewheeling helps to regenerate power in the ESC so it actually makes it run cooler not hotter um, and freewheeling function you can set it to of course enabled to have it enabled first of all but you can set the um, the RPM uh, decrease rate value from 1 to 20. I recommend starting with a low value between 1 and 3, uh, which that's what I've been preferring to use on my touring cars. But you can, of course, go higher if you want, but I recommend using uh, 1 to 3 as a starting point if you want to play with the freewheeling. And this is not only a function that works well in modified, it also works well in uh, stock classes as proven by our team drivers recently during testing for the world championships. Uh, so that's freewheeling. Uh, the other big new function is disc brake. So in the past, as you may remember, we have the, the linear brake, which is the most uh, typically used uh, brake setting, which gives the, the best feel, the most forgiving, but also the weakest um, amount of brake. Then you have the traditional brake, which is a lot, is a lot stronger, more aggressive. Some drivers uh, prefer the traditional brake um, based on their driving style that they require a stronger brake from the ESC. It, it's also uh, class related, so some slower categories may need uh, a stronger type of brake. But with a disc brake, you have a brake which works um, regardless of the speed of the motor, so the, the strength of the brake is not affected by how fast the, the car is going. And it's called disc brake because it can be compared to, let's say, uh, a brake in a real car or a disc brake in a GP vehicle. So, you know, when you, you push the brake in a GP car, the brake pads are gonna start to engage against the brake disc and you have a sort of feel for when uh, the vehicle is just slowing down and then when the brakes fully engaged it comes to a complete stop instantly so you can set up the disc brake to work in a similar way where it's uh, super strong su uh, super efficient in making the car stop and because it's so strong and may be hard to get used to and may be hard to find the correct setting for you also have a new setting which is the ABS which you can set this from 1 to 20 I believe and you can tune the, um, the ABS setting to work together with the disc brake because it makes the disc brake work more efficiently and ABS you can set um, as a starting point a value of 5 or you can go up to 10 or even 15 if you feel that the ABS function was not uh, sufficient. There's a couple of more functions which are um, not really for performance but you have a um, smart fan function which you can set the, the fan to uh, stop running when the ESC is not hot so the fan will only come on when the ESC is heating up when it's getting warm. Uh, that way you save power, of course, and you save the lifetime of the fan. Uh, those are the main things which uh, are new. There's also the boost activation, which in the past you had RPM and auto. Now you also have uh, throttle percentage. So you can set it to be activated and deactivated in relation to the percentage of throttle given on the transmitter and instead of just having the RPM range which uh, most people set in the past you can now set it to the percentage of throttle given so you have uh, an additional way of setting the boost window for your uh, ESC which is really useful for some conditions brake and throttle curvature are also new functions they actually work uh, a bit like an 
exponential function. So you can set the, the throttle and the brake to be more forgiving. You can uh, tune these parameters to your liking. It's um, a way of fine tuning the feel of the throttle and the brake without having to, to mess with it on the radio. And sometimes changing it on the ESC is a more efficient change than, than sending it on the radio. So throttle and brake curvature, pretty useful as well. And with that, I believe that we've covered all the new functions. We've spoken about the differences between the two versions of the ESC. Um, I think I covered most of uh, what's important for the new G3 ESC and um, I'm excited to use it. I'm excited to hear your feedback from running the ESC and uh, I will post some setup sheets soon for both stock and modified to give you guys some starting points. But um, I'd like to say that when you start off using the ESC, you can start with the settings that you previously ran in your G2 ESC. And um, because they convert straight over. And uh, for example, you can start with the, fr the freewheeling function deactivated, and then you can um, sort of get familiar with the ESC and then start activating this new function. And of course, uh, the disc brake as well. But the, the settings are uh, directly compatible from the G2 to the G3 ESC. Uh, the feeling will be similar. You will only have to fine tune it a bit to your liking. And that's it. Thank you for watching and uh, enjoy the new Hobbywing ESC.